Today we study capacitance. Capacitor is a circuit unit consisting of two isolated pieces of conductors, just like parallel plate capacitor. It's positively charged and negatively charged. Initially, they are neutral. Once it is connected to the power line, one part is higher in potential and the other part becomes lower in potential. Then the electric field is generated between the two plates. So electrostatic energy is saved in inside this state. Right. If the two disconnected conducting pieces are oppositely charged, then the attractive Coulomb force holds the charges in the capacitor. Because the Coulomb force, Coulomb force between the positively charged and the negative charge, they they attract each other. These two different sign charges will be hold will, uh, will be held by this capacitor. The capacitor is called charged if one piece is charged with plus Q and the other piece is minus Q. Usually the amount of charge on both sides should be the same because we, we, we consider the case initially it is uh, neutral. According to the Coulomb's law of electrostatic force, the two pieces charged with opposite sign attract each other, right? Hence, the capacitor tends to keep the charges stored. You know, the electric field between the two plates, the electric field is in here, and this becomes electrostatic energy. The geometry of a capacitor is designed to hold a certain amount of charge effectively in a small space. So the electric field between the two parallel plates with sigma and minus sigma, then the electric field between the two plates is sigma over epsilon zero, and outside the electric field becomes zero. This is uh, for the parallel plate capacitor, but in case we have cylindrical capacitor, we can also make a capacitor with a positive, negatively charged outside. Then <coughs> the amount of charge saved by two different capacitors can be different once the potential difference, uh, even if the potential difference between the two plates are the same. Two parallel plates construct a simple effective capacitor. So this is the simplest example of capacitor. The parallel plate capacitor is the simplest case because one can construct it in a very easy way and the electric field is very simple, constant inside, outside it's vanishing. F. V is the symbol representing the potential difference. So we use electric field E and potential difference V. Between the two isolated conductors charged with plus Q and minus Q. The charge Q is proportional to V as long as the geometry of the capacitor is invariant. We keep the geometry of this capacitor, parallel plates, for example, and if we increase the potential difference between the two plates, then what happens is we can increase the amount of charge saved inside uh, the capacitor. If the charge is increased, the 
sigma increases, charge density increases, therefore the electric field increases. The charge Q is proportional to V, so charge Q saved in the capacitor is proportional to V and proportional constant is called C. So we write Q equals CV. Here we call this C as capacitance. According to Gauss law or Coulomb's law of electrostatic force, the electric field must be proportional to the charge that is the source of the electric field. <coughs> For example, paraplate capacitor. Electric field is sigma over epsilon zero. And this is charge Q divided by epsilon zero A. So electric field is proportional to the charge saved inside uh, the capacitor. The potential difference between the two pieces of a given capacitor can be computed as electric, once you know the electric field E dot dx put the negative sign on it and integrate then you will obtain the potential difference between these two points. Okay. Therefore, delta V is minus integral of electric field scalar product dx. So, initial final. For a parallel plate capacitor, the electric field between the two plates is constant. Has charge Q is proportional to the electric field and the electric field is proportional to the potential. Potential difference is proportional to the electric field and the electric field is proportional to the charge. Q, E, V, they are all proportional to among one and another. The proportionality constant C in Q equals C, V is called capacitance. We is a capacitance. The SI unit of the capacitance that follows from Q equals CV is the Coulomb per volt. It is Coulomb per volt and it is simply written as F and it is a farad. Farad is named after Faraday. Faraday is named after Faraday, Michael Faraday. With SI prefixes, we write microfarad, that's 10 to the minus 6 farad, nanofarad, 10 to the minus 9 farad, picofarad, 10 to the minus 12 farad. One way to charge a capacitor is to place it in an electric circuit with a battery. Battery is the source of potential difference. This is a battery and the long, long bar and thick and short bar. The thick and short bar indicates the negative sign. The potential is lower, a long bar indicates the positive terminal. Any element that is connected to a circuit 
the two ends are called ends are called the terminal. So any third element has a two two terminals. Elementary circuit element such as capacitor C, resistor R, and inductor L. Or battery. Battery maintains the potential difference V between its terminals. So it is assumed this uh, potential difference V is assumed to be constant, but actually the this amount changes varies with time and if one becomes obsolete we have to replace with the new one. An electric circuit is a path through which charge can flow. Here we find there is a switch that dis connects or disconnects the circuit. Potential difference V is generated by the battery and this is the parallel plate capacitor, the, the usual sign of the capacitor. Hey, except for the capacitor, whose two plates are intrinsically disconnected, any part of a complete circuit must be connected to make a loop. Make a loop. In order to make a loop, we, we have to close this A complete circuit becomes an incomplete circuit when a switch is open. So switch is uh, closed, they are connected, S switch is open. This is open, closed. When it is closed, it becomes complete. When it's open, it is incomplete. If the two plates of a capacitor does not contain extra charge, then Q equals zero. We say it is discharged. And the potential difference between the two plates is V because Q equals C V. C is a constant. Depending on the geometry of the two plates, so if Q equals zero, then potential difference is also zero. Once the circuit shown in the figure becomes a complete circuit by closing this circuit, the capacitor is being charged until the potential difference between the two plates reaches that between the terminals of the battery with the opposite direction. <coughs> Positive charge flows in plus 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 so positive charge will be accumulated on the left side and on the right plate negative charge will be accumulated and the coulomb force between positive charge plate and the negatively charged plate keep them keep the charges contained contained in the capacitor. When it reaches the state where this potential difference is the same as the potential difference between the two plates, then we can find the Q becomes a CV. So it is the state is called the capacitor is fully charged. An ideal capacitor keeps the charge indefinitely until it is put into a complete circuit in, uh, to discharge. Discharge means to connect this one directly, then the current, because of the attraction between the positive charge and negative charge, this circuit becomes short, then the current flows and this capacitor will be completely discharged but normally we do not connect the two plates directly 
as as soon as you connect these two plates, it's not a capacitor anymore. The plate of the capacitor that is connected to the plus positive negative terminal of the battery is positively negatively charged. You know? This side is positively charged. Positive. This side is negatively charged. The positively charged plate has a higher potential. So, V is a high, V is low. Electric field, the positively charged plate, negatively charged plate, electric field direction, and potential increases. Potential increases. Potential increases. So electric field is minus gradient potential. Opposite direction of increasing potential is the direction of the electric field. An ideal conducting wire connecting circuit units keeps the potential the same. Ideal conducting wire connecting the circuit. Okay. If they are is the two places are connected, delta V becomes G. Computational capacitors. Parallel plate capacitor. We remember that the electric field between the two plates, one plate is charged with sigma, the other plate is charged with minus sigma, where sigma is the charge per unit area. Then we remember the electric field is zero outside, and between the two plates, the electric field is sigma over epsilon zero. Sure, if there is a single plate with the sigma, the electric field emits to the right and left. Sure, if, when sigma is positive, and this amount is sigma over 2 epsilon 0, and sigma over 2 epsilon 0. Let us compute the capacitance C. How can I compute the capacitance C? It depends on the Q equals C. So, we want to compute the, express the charge Q in terms of potential difference. Then remaining coefficient can be extracted from this formula. So, we begin with the, this, this expression. Electric field between the two plates is sigma of epsilon zero and direction is in here This direction, unit vector is k hat. And sigma is charge per area. Now, we want to find this kind of equation beginning with the electric field. But we remember potential is minus the electric field dx integral. Okay. From lower potential to the higher potential, we high, we low. All right. So, electric field is this. And distance, V equals E times distance. So, if we substitute this one in here, V equals 
sigma over epsilon 0 d and charge q epsilon 0 a d you find q equals v. q equals something times v so epsilon 0 a over d should be the capacitance of the parallel capacitor so the result is capacitor Capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor is evaluated as epsilon zero a over d, where d is the distance between the two plates. D is the distance between the two plates. This area, cross-sectional area of the plate. Hence, we can increase the amount of charge saved into the capacitor by increasing A or by decreasing D. Here, the amount of charge the increases as A increases. And as D decreases when the potential V is fixed, the vacuum permittivity the, or the permittivity constant epsilon zero is originally defined by this. We can make use of this expression to find the explicit value for the capacitance C of the power point capacitor. The simplest case was the power plate capacitor. And we can extend this idea to compute the capacitance of the cylindrical capacitor. Cylindrical capacitor has an electric field inside and outside electric field and deep inside the electric field is zero. So the charge is positive inside not always sometimes we can say negative charge inside and positive charge outside it depends on the situation but the difference is only the direction of direction of the electric field is they are incoming they are outgoing okay we compute the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor of length L. We have a cylinder of length L and inner and outer radii I and D. Inner radii. Inner radii A outer ready B and we want to vary the radius rho from A to B the inner and outer cylinders are charged with plus Q and minus Q respectively space is empty the Z axis is along the central axis, central axis of the cylinder is now the Z axis. We choose the Gaussian surface S of a concentric cylinder of radius rho. Concentric cylinder of radius rho. And very rho from A to B. Sure, we can vary to infinity, however, we will, we will find that as soon as we increase the radius 
outside uh, electric field will become zero. Inside the Gaussian surface, for any row that is uh, less than A, there's no charge because the positive charge is all located on the boundary surface. You know, this is a conductor. This, this is conductor. This is also conductor. Always charges outside of surface. Inside the Gaussian surface for inside uh, inside the Gaussian surface for any a row less than a, there's no charge because the positive charges are all located on the boundary surface at row equals a. That's right. Outside the Gaussian surface for greater than b, there's no charge because negative charges are all located on the boundary of the surface. Okay, that's right. The net charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is zero because initially they are uh, neutral. We have solved this problem previously by making use of Coulomb's law to find the electric field and also, we, we learned how to compute the electric field by making use of Gauss law. So, this, this is the repetition of repeated application of the Gauss law. The electric field flux passing through the Gaussian surface of radius rho. And the right side is a Q enclosed. The charge enclosed in enclosed by this Gaussian surface. And epsilon zero is a permittivity constant, a vacuum. Because of the symmetry, cylindrical symmetry, electric field is along the radial direction. Right. So the surface, if we unfold this, we have length L. Cut it in here. Unfold this cylindrical surface. It should be two two pi rho. So electric field on this surface should be constant as long as the rho is a constant. So electric field is constant. This area, this area is 2 pi rho L. Right? And charge enclosed is lambda times L. Lambda is charge per unit length and the length L is the length of this uh, wire, that is uh, cylindrical capacitance, capacitor. Hence, we end up with uh, this expression, electric field, is toward the radial direction rho hat, and magnitude is 2 pi epsilon 2, 2 pi rho L is the area. And this is a lambda L. So Q is lambda L, and this L, this L cancels to find the lambda over two pi epsilon zero rho. Okay.
All right. Once the electric field is obtained, we can obtain the corresponding electrostatic potential V that can be evaluated by integrating minus electric field displacement integration. This is uh, delta V, right? And once we evaluate this delta V, then it will be expressed in terms of something times Q charge. And then you you will we will find q equals one of something times the V and this one will be the capacitance and the result is we have one over rho dependence except that everything is constant constant vector so this integral is a logarithm logarithm integral from evaluated from B to rho we usually put the potential at infinity to be zero and we know the outside outer shell outside B the electric field is uh, vanishing so V V equals zero at R uh, rho goes to infinity but this value is a constant because the outside the electric field is completely zero. So this potential zero is all the same until we reach B. And rho is inside in here because B is greater than rho this negative sign considered flip the up the numerator and denominator then we, we find the positive sign and log natural log appears except that every vector is constant and we find length depends length depends as a return the potential between, uh, difference between the inner radius and the outer radius A and B is expressed in this way Q over 2 pi epsilon 0 L log B over A now I have V on the left side Q on the right side so Q equals CV. We write this expression multiplying inverse of this factor. We find that capacitance is 2 pi epsilon 0 length L divided by log B over A. So capacitance is proportional to the length, the length of the cylindrical capacitor and sure it is proportional to epsilon zero and it is divided by log b over a if b reaches a you will find log becomes a limit B goes to A plus 0 plus then it reaches log 1 log 1 is 0 so it goes to infinity so if we make the gap between the two plates the two, two cylinders inner, inner cylinder and outer cylinder then you can increase the capacitance uh, arbitrarily large but if it is too close uh, then the, the charged particle emits so you should be very careful next we consider spherical spherical capacitor and okay, now first we consider the pedal plate capacitor and 
capacitance of the paraplate capacitor was obtained as epsilon zero A over D. In the case of cylindrical capacitor, we have obtained we obtained this expression. This is the capacitance of the cylindrical capacitor. Now let us consider a spherical capacitor. The situation is uh, almost the same. The logic is exactly the same, but the difference is the choice of the Gaussian surface. Again, we have charge inside plus Q, charge outside minus Q. Then electric field is isolated between the two shells. And innermost side, E field is zero, outside E field is zero, and electric field is just isolated between the two the spheres. Again, we use the Gauss law. Electric field should be radial along the radial direction, R hat. And for a given radius, the electric magnitude of electric field must be constant and area of radius r, area of the sphere with radius r is 4 pi r squared. And substituting this area, you'll find the electric field. Sure, this is positive q only if it is between this inner radius and outer radius. It is inside, inside the inner radius, there's no charge enclosed. Outside the outer radius, the sum of these two charges is zero, so Q enclosed is also zero. So the electric field survives only between A and B. All right. Using this electric field, substitute this electric field to the expression for the potential. Potential again. Potential is uh, can be obtained minus electric field displacement disintegral. Again, outside is R equals B. R equals A, R goes to infinity, potential is zero, but if this outside electric field is zero, so potential these two infinity and outer radius, this is V equals zero constant. So what we do is integrate from here from here to some radius r. Okay? So from b to r integral and everything will be substituted in here and we have the value at r and value at b subtraction. Finally, the potential difference between the two radius, inner radius and outer radius, we have Va minus Vb equals Q over 4 pi epsilon over a vector is the same. 1 over A, A is the inner radius, A is smaller than B, so thus 1 over A is greater than 1 over B. So this is positive value if Q is positive. Now, 
we again obtain the v equals something q. That means q equals 1 over something v. q equals cv. Okay? So, q inverse of this vector is the capacitance of the spherical capacitor. Thus, we have for pi epsilon this vector in the numerator. Reciprocal of this one is AB over B minus A. As B goes to infinity, And A, let us put this A to be capital R, the capacitance of this capacitor with the outside radius to infinity is 4 pi epsilon 0 R. The following problems are simple applications of those cases problem 8 is related to rescaling problem next we consider the combination of capacitors and we want to compute the equivalent equivalent capacitor when we connect many capacitors all together and it behaves like a single capacitor that is called uh, the the amount of capacitance of a single capacitor that is equivalent to the combination of capacitor is called the equivalent capacitor So we want to compute the capacitance of the equivalent capacitor. First, we consider the parallel connection of capacitors. They are parallel. This, this is a parallel connection of n capacitors with different values of capacitance. Right? There's negative sign, positive, so positively charged positively charged, positively charged, we can think about an equivalent capacitor, C, that is equivalent to that. You know, amount of charge should be the same, Q1 plus Q2 plus Qn. This charge should be minus Q1 minus Q2 and so on, minus Qn. In addition, this point, this point, this point, they are equipotential. And these, 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 they are equipotential. Hence, the potential difference in every capacitor that are related, that are connected in parallel, must be the same. Potential difference is a constant. And charge of the equivalent capacitor is the same as the sum of the charges. So, charge Q, this is the charge Q for the equivalent capacitor, must be the sum of the charges from Q1 to Qn. Now, everything Qi equals to Ci Vi. 
but we have a common common potential difference so CIV therefore V is vectored out CI Q equals CV so VV cancel what we find is a C is a sum of CIs right therefore equivalent capacitance is the sum of the capacitances next we consider the series connection of capacitors when they are when n capacitors are connected in series the potential difference can be added up and because they are initially uh, discharged once it is charged with plus q this part should be minus q in between there used to be zero so some of these two charges must be the zero therefore every 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 capacitor has the same charge so q is common So Q equals Q1 through QN. It's written in here. And some of the potentials, some of the potentials must be the same as the net potential. So we like to replace this one with the equivalent capacitor. C with potential V QI equals CI VI and VI equals QI over CI and QI is all the same so Q over CI so Q is vectored out the Q equals the CV for the equivalent capacitor V equals Q over C substitute Q over C so Q Q cancels what you will find is 1 over C equals the sum of I equals uh, runs from I equals 1 to N 1 over C I there's the reciprocal of equivalent capacitance reciprocal of the equivalent capacitance is the sum of the reciprocal of the capacitances these are some applications of this uh, master formula for the connection of uh, series connection serial connection of uh, n capacitors additional application can be found in here and there next we consider we consider the electrostatic energy saved in inside the uh, capacitor first if there is no charge at all the, the 
capacitor is uh, completely discharged, Q equals zero. When Q equals zero, the energy is zero. The electric field is nothing. Because Q equals CV, the positively charged plate is high in potential than the other by this one, right? V equals Q over C. We assume that there is charge Q minus Q. And why don't we subtract the DQ from here? Then it becomes minus DQ and move this one into the positive part to change the amount of charge because the potential difference V the Q over C I need to move this DQ from the low potential to higher potential the amount of work I need is V times dQ. That is 1 over C Q dQ. That is the amount of work necessary to move dQ to above. Then what I want to do is integrate all these tiny energies from the beginning to until beginning that is from 0 to charge Q I have Q dQ this is simply what about to C Q square right integral x dx of course 1 over 1 half x square so this is Q square So Q scale to C or Q equals CV. Therefore, we have one half of CV squared. So this is the electrostatic energy saved inside the capacitor. We have, we can interpret this energy in a different point of view. We have Q square over to C. This is uh, electrostatic energy saved inside the capacitor. As we can see, the electric field is proportional to charge. So let me replace this Q with Q equals epsilon zero A E substitute one over to C epsilon zero A E squared. And we remember what is the capacitance of the paraplate capacitor? Epsilon 0A over D. Two epsilon 0A over D. Now, I have one half epsilon zero a a d times e square what is this this is area and distance aha this is the volume of the capacitor in a parallel flight capacitor electric field e is constant so, it's one half epsilon zero e square times volume. That is electrostatic energy, and 
actually this can be understood as the energy density per unit volume this one can be because this is a U electrostatic energy so one half epsilon zero e squared this one is a energy density of the electric field per unit volume That's very very important You can <coughs> apply this river in many cases. Let's just in here. Applications are given there. Follow the computation. Finally, we consider the dielectric in a capacitor. Dielectric is a kind of oil or water. Even the air is a dielectric. Dielectric means a material composed of uh, dipoles and each dipole can rotate freely depending on the application of the electric field, external electric field but globally these dipoles do not move for example we have small magnets NS, NS. If if there is very strong magnetic field, then these small magnets align. If there is no, the mutual communication gives the redistribution of the directions. But anyway, usually they they can be uh, if their interactions are weak enough, they they are randomly distributed. But if there is a strong magnetic field from outside, that all of the magnets are online, something like that. A dielectric is an insulating material, so there is no current flowing inside dielectric material, such as a mineral oil or plastic. While a dielectric is not a conductor, it holds electric dipoles in it. The center of the dipoles are fixed in the material. However, the orientation can change under non-vanishing external electric fields. In 1837, Michael Faraday first looked into the effect of the dielectric material filled in the space between the plates of the capacitor and actually the current uh, commercial capacitors are all containing dielectric because dielectric once we insert the dielectric between the plates the amount of charge i mean uh, held by the capacitor increases that is the main reason why we insert the dielectric into inside the, between the two plates of the capacitor. So there is a factor of K we call dielectric constant that is always greater than one for the dielectric material. If kappa, this kappa. Kappa equals 1 is vacuum. And for any dielectric material, dielectric constant is greater than 1. So as a result, C increases after inserting the dielectric material.
there's a breakdown potential means for example there's a cloud you can find the thunderbolt that means that the current flows in the air that is the breakdown uh, greater than the breakdown potential of the dielectric made up cloud that is uh, moisture the characteristic dielectric strength of a material is the maximum value of the electric field that can tolerate without breakdown so if, if it breaks down the, you, you have to the capacitor will become out of order and we have to replace it by a new one capacitance of a capacitor in general of the form we for, for a parallel plate capacitor it was epsilon zero a over d right for example here cylindrical capacitor we have C epsilon times something is 2 pi L over log B over A this one is L right it depends on the geometry of the system here here c equals epsilon zero times something that something over l is four pi a b over b minus a something like that So, if we do not insert anything inside the capacitor, the original capacitance is written in the form. After inserting the dielectric material, the capacitance increases by a factor of kappa. In atomic view, we can see this figure electric field E0 electric field E0 appears when there is no dielectric material if there is dielectric material electric dipole initially plates a charges of minus and plus if there is a dipole this positively charged plate attracts a negative charge and the positive charge in the dielectric is attracted by the negatively charged plate and these dielectrics are all aligned and actually these are there are many okay Because in most space is empty, the empty space except for the position where the dielectric materials are filled in. So this uh, dipole generate the electric field like that.
Thus, the, because the most space are empty, the electric field generated by the dipole is this direction. While the original direction of the electric field, original direction of the electric field, because it is positively charged and negatively charged plates, electric field, this is E0, original electric field, and dipole field gives backward direction. So these original field, these original field and the uh, Induced electrical of the die electric, they cancel, they tend to cancel to make the net electric field smaller than the original one. So electrostatic induction is the origin of the induced field E prime. This is E prime. This is E prime. Induced electric field. Induced electric field. Backward. And this is original electric field. The alignment of the dipoles of dielectric material in the presence of the external field, electric field, is analogous to the alignment of compass needle in the presence of the external magnetic fields. After the alignment, the dipole P is parallel to the electric dipole P is this is the original electric field E0 and dipole P is in direction. And the net electric field E that is the sum of original electric field and this induced electric field due to the dipole that is E prime is a backward therefore E the net electric field is always always parallel but weaker always parallel because the induced one cannot win the game with the original field the weaker the resultant electric field is weaker. Resultant electric field is weaker than the original electric field. Then the, that effect is represented by the dielectric constant and vacuum. Dielectric constant is one, so no change at all. Air, there's a tiny difference. Paper, oil, depending on the material, the value changes. Because of the change in the electric field in comparison with this is the original electric field, E0, that is greater than the resultant electric field because the induced electric field that is opposite. And resultant electric field they are parallel but weaker than the original electric field. This can be understood as the original charge plus Q is charged dipole alignment gives at the boundary dipole alignments with the sum of these plus charges and negative charges. So effectively, effectively, the sum, the sum, 
becomes uh, smaller than the because part of them cancel part of them cancel the effect of electric field decreases by this cancellation we say this amount of charge is Q prime induced minus Q prime this induced charge and originally it was it used to be Q and next the sum is Q minus Q prime Q and this Q must be greater than greater than Q minus Q prime now the Gauss law can be used to evaluate the electric field inside uh, between the two plates. The surface charge density is the sum of at original charge Q and minus Q prime that is induced charge induced charge touching touching the plate. This is a negative charge induced is opposite one. So this is the net charge the solving this linear equation we can determine the dielectric constant kappa we can express in terms of original field this is the resultant field and this resultant field is smaller than original E is smaller than original one and so result one is expressed as original one divided by kappa because kappa is greater than one except for vacuum kappa equals one for vacuum okay and then we use the, this uh, net charge original charge Q and induced charge minus Q prime and solving this linear equation you see this one is expressed that this charge is divided by kappa to represent the resultant electric field a simple linear equation can be solved and as a result we effectively use the electric displacement D that represents the epsilon zero E electric field multiplied by the dielectric constant kappa. That is just factor this kappa epsilon zero out and multiply to the left hand side, then this Q over A is invariant under the varying any kind of dielectric material. In the previous class, we, we studied how to compute the electric field out of the potential. That is uh, taking the minus the gradient of a potential. And we obtained the electric, electrostatic potential for the di dipole placed at the origin can be expressed in this one. The explicit calculation will give the electric field by taking the minus gradient of this potential, you can obtain the electric field directly. The final result will be like that. Please do the calculation by yourself. All right. Today, we have studied the capacitance in depth. That's it for today.